Hey, August Block here again, and this is the next installment in my series on training and preparing for the ultra endurance cycling event, Paris Brest Paris. So I, it's been about 60, 65 days since I started this real final push to get myself ready for this long haul event. And I think it's time for a little bit of a progress report. I've been doing a lot, a lot of pedaling, and I think it would be helpful for us to sort of recap what's happened and am I getting any better? So let's just sit down for a few minutes here and uh, talk through the stats. So anybody who's not totally into this kind of like nerd out numbers thing, then I think uh, you might zone out on it. But we started this series on May 24th. And at that time I had said that I was targeting around 6,000 miles before I fly on August 19th. Um, but I, that was a little bit too ambitious just in the time frame. So I was really shooting more for around 5,000 ultimately to hit that before I flew on August 19th. And that's like the recommended minimum amount on the uh, Randonors uh, of America, Randonors USA Rusa website is about 5,000 miles before you fly. So let's take a look at it. In order to think about this data so far, I kind of broke it up into, at, uh, I, I cut it off at July 20th because this is where I can get my Strava data. I had just done a really long ride on July 20th. So I looked at the 57 days since I started to July 20th. And then I looked at the 57 days previously. So I'm calling the previous 57 days before May 24th as the P57. And I'm calling the current date since May 24th the C57, and those are 57 days, right? Um, now, I, since I logged this data, I've also done another 280 mile ride, but I can only download data so frequently, my entire archive from Strava. So I'm just gonna go with this July 20th date uh, because it's really a good milestone. So let's just start with the, the simple stuff, like the mileage. So in the P57, the previous 57 days, I logged 747 miles, um, but in the C57, I logged 1,554 miles. That's a 107% increase over the P57. I think that that translates to an average distance of per ride from 53 to 64. So that's a 21.29% per ride distance average. But what's more, important is the average distance per day is that uh, in the previous p57 I'm, I was only averaging 13.11 miles per day and in this current uh, c57 I'm averaging 27.27 miles per day that's a big jump you know that's again same 107.92 but that's talks about every day I'm averaging about just under 30 miles I've done approximately 71.4% more rides from 14 in the P57 to 24 in the C57. And I think we're, what, that is starting to be reflected in like how I'm performing on those rides. So each ride has an average speed, right? And so my average speed previously on the P57 was 15.92 miles an hour but my average speed in the C57 is 16.33 miles. It's not a huge lift, 2.59%, but it's, it's showing a, a pretty significant improvement. And across all of those average speeds, so each ride has an average speed, the max average speed that I had on a single ride previously was 16.71 miles per hour. Uh, but the max average ride in the current, the C57 is 18.08 miles per hour. Now that's a huge lift for a max average, you know, and I feel that in my riding, I'm performing better. Uh, that's an 8.18% improvement. My average heart rate has also increased, like average heart rate across all the rides from 140 beats per minute to 145 beats per minute. So I'm, I'm pushing myself harder and my heart's beating faster. Um, uh, the big thing though that's really interesting for me is I'm 54 years old and for that there's a like, sort of a baseline calculation for what your maximum heart rate should be and it's, it's basically like your it's 220 minus your age which would put me at 166 as an as an estimated max heart rate now that's not for a for an athlete or someone who trains like I'm training but my maximum 
heart rate across the P57, previous 57 days, was 188 beats per minute. And now, in the C57, it's 191 beats per minute. And I actually think I did a little bit higher the other day, which is telling me that's the, the baseline calculated max heart rate for like a 29-year-old. So I'm not saying that 29-year-old is an ultra-endurance athlete, but you know, it's a good reference point for being you know, 57 years old. But I think that that's like, that kind of points to some interesting progress that I'm making in terms of my fitness. But I think what is really cool is, you know, to really, how do I measure my actual fitness and performance? And Strava has a few good tools for that. I think the most important one is this metric they call fitness. And I'm sure it takes in like your cadence and your speed and your heart rate and all the data that I'm providing it. And those are the, the, th the three main ones that I can send to the send to the system. And over the last, you know, 60 days, it shows that my fitness has improved 175%. I mean, that's like huge for me. Like, so um, big, big lift in what my overall fitness is. This is a relative metric relative to what I was 90 days ago and what I am now. Uh, additionally, you can get a little more context by logging into the, the Garmin Connect app and in there there are some insights in there and if i'm reading these insights correctly and i drill down i can look at the the distance and the distance compared to like what i think is all other garmin riders on that app and according to that i'm riding further than 99 percent of all other garmin users on the app that's pretty big i i would suspect that like all randonneurs are up in that 1% because randonneurs just log so many miles. You know, it, to put it in perspective, there's another insight in there that talks about your speed, average speed. And since I'm ultra endurance, long haul, I'm obviously not doing a lot of sprinting. So in that metric, up against the rest of all the Garmin riders, I'm only riding faster than 80% of the Garmin users on that app. And I'm sure that includes like people on beach cruisers and like kids riding and anyone with a, with a smartwatch or whatever it is. But so riding further than 99%, riding faster than 80% on Garmin. So that's pointing to really some significant progress over the last, you know, 57 days. Like I said, since I closed that out, it was I've done another 280 mile ride, which was an, a ride that was supposed to kind of imitate the first big leg to Ludeac, from Paris to Ludeac, which is about 278 miles. Um, now there's a bunch of elevation gain that I'm not, I don't have in Florida when I train. My training ride for this was 5,000 feet of elevation where, elevation where I think that that's about 13,000 feet. But the benefit of this is that the, the, the the, the heat in Florida is so oppressive. It was like 96 degrees, 90% humidity, no cloud cover, rolling, little rolling hills for like, you know, six or seven hours. It was just oppressive. So I'm thinking in terms of like hardening me for this ride, that ride was a good preparation ride. And then previously you may have seen the um, sleep deprivation ride, which was very similar. It's just very rough riding conditions mainly the heat and humidity. So I think I've done some hardening of my shell, hardening of my mind, preparing myself, and I've made a bunch of progress. I also was able to do these two last long rides without wearing the skin off of my butt, you know, by being really diligent, using my timer to remind me to stand up, applying, you know, I use, I've been using Lanaseptic recently, but I think chamois butter or buttonhole are probably all gonna work for people, um, applying it every 50 miles. And so I think that I'm getting as close to ready as I can be, considering I'm going to fly in just 19 days. Well, technically 18, because this is the first. So anyway, so that's the update. Thank you for going on this journey with me. I gotta pound out some more uh, miles here before I take off and then really start my checklist, packing and getting ready. Alrighty, thanks so much. Till next time. I'm